Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who like biology, this will be a little bit of fun. For the rest of you, well, you'll have to hang on for a moment. But this is something that is very, very beautif beautiful to me. This is a single bone cell, an osteoblast. It's a factory, a small factory that nature has created. And when you take this factory and you give it a little squeeze, a pretty incredible thing happens. It starts to create and manufacture a ceramic composite material. Let's see. There we go. And when you take multiples of these little factories and you group them together, you start to create a network of factories. And as you apply force to them, the same thing happens. They start to generate this beautiful ceramic composite. And that ceramic composite is a repeating unit of what's generated from that single bone cell. And we create this intricate structure. It's quite a fascinating structure in that all of the lines in that structure are perfectly aligned to the forces that you've applied to the bone. But as we scale up with this system, something funny starts to emerge and we no longer have the properties of that single bone cell, but we start to create macro properties that go well beyond the potential of where we started. We've created something with grand possibilities, a whole new set of properties that we couldn't expect or predict from the behavior of that single cell. Now, for those of you who really hate biology, you can Breathe a sigh of relief. We're done with the biology lesson. We've moved beyond to something more fun. This is our standard curve that we uh, use to express economies of scale. So the more of something you produce, the more efficient it is to produce that something until you get to a point where your system is so unwieldy and so uh, large that it becomes inefficient again. That's the standard model. And if we apply that standard model to most systems, what we'd expect to see is that the large properties of any system are really just a reflection of a scaled up version of the smaller system made more efficient. But that's not what happens in the real world. Something really transformative takes place. And I call that transformation a scaling discontinuity. So this is a new concept that really underlies entrepreneurship. If you've heard of Kurtzenarian or Shantarian economic theory, this is what I've discovered that's the foundation of both of those economic theories of how entrepreneurship creates massive change in economies, scaling discontinuities. And scaling discontinuities happen when we take a highly networked ecosystem, and we apply a frictionless framework. And all of you can probably imagine what a networked ecosystem is, but you might not have heard of frictionless frameworks before. And that's because I've been not doing a good job about writing about them. Sorry, Laura Baldwin, but uh, that will change. And what we see when we look at scaling discontinuities is that they are fundamentally the mechanism for massive economic change worldwide. For example, the American Industrial Revolution and the European Industrial Revolution are beautiful, clean, scaling discontinuities on the curve of economic efficiency. So getting back to frictionless frameworks, I mentioned it's somewhat of a new thing, except it's actually an old concept that I've just put words to. If you take a hammer, I can give a hammer to any of you. It's an incredibly powerful tool, but it's a tool that all of you know how to use. In five minutes, you can take a hammer and you can start framing a house with a nail, with a set of nails. And if you're an expert, you can probably pick up the ham use the hammer to pick up a nail in one flick and slam the, the nail into the wood that you're trying to uh, fix together. Since Maker Faire just took place, and I'm a maker, 
Arduino is another great example of a frictionless framework. 20 years ago, it might take me, as an embedded expert, two weeks to bring up a new development tool and get an LED blinking. But now I can do that with Arduino in about 30 seconds. FedEx is another great example. Scaling discontinuities and frictionless frameworks are not all about hardware. They're not all about manufacturing. They're about delivery of goods and services. They're about the creation of value. FedEx created massive value by applying a frictionless framework to moving goods and materials around the country, by consolidating all those materials at a single hub. It was genius. It was thought not to work. Everyone was trying to look at solving the traveling salesman problem, and FedEx said, you know what? If we make one hub, the traveling salesman problem goes away entirely. Now, what are other examples of scaling discontinuities? The modern banking system is a profound one, where we've taken a highly networked ecosystem of computers, we've applied the frictionless framework of digital money, where I can access my bank account from anywhere in the world instantaneously. I don't need people with horseback or ships moving gold from country to country to get my money. Facebook is another example of an amazing scaling discontinuity, where they applied the frictionless framework of making it easy for people to connect with each other, and looked at it and said, huh, we're going to create the, the most massive collection of user data in the world. Tremendous economic value. And I can apply this analysis to just about every successful company, just about every successful project. Using it, I can tell you that Bitcoin, or something like it, will be the next big economic scaling discontinuity in the banking system. So if you're trying to create radical economic change, as all of us are, you need to take a connected ecology and a frictionless framework and bring them together. That means either creating an ecology in the first place, creating a frictionless framework, adding the two, or enhancing the connectedness of an ecology or enhancing the frictionlessness of a framework through tools and technology. That leads to radical economic change. And this conference, SOLID, this is not just about disrupting economies of scale. This is about disrupting economies. Thank you.